Welcome to the Wachau Ring in Melk in Austria for round five of Rallycross Challenge Europe. In scorching temperatures with a big crowd, plenty of action to come. Stay with us as we go through all four classes for the Rallycross Challenge Europe 2015. Rallycross Challenge Europe moves to Austria for round five and the Wachau Ring. Austria has a proud Rallycross heritage. Franz Wurz, the father of Grand Prix driver Alex Wurz, raced competitively in the 1980s throughout Europe. The circuit in high temperatures is going to be a real challenge. 1,266 metres. There's plenty of action guaranteed with the chicanes and, of course, the joker loop that everybody must take at least once during each heat and final. We start the action with the first of our classes, Super 1600. Nine drivers from six different countries, of whom Igor Sanin in the number 20 Renault Clio is leading the championship from Artis Barmanis of Latvia in a Renault Twingo. Sanin is fastest in heat one here and in heat two. Baumanis tops heat three in the black and orange Twingo. Sven Seliger though comes second in the qualifying points despite contact there with Kasparis Navikas in the Skoda Fabia. So the German driver in the Ford Fiesta behind Egor Sanin. Vaslav Vaverke in the Peugeot 208 also strong in qualifying. They line up for the five lap final. Cleo in the middle, Viverka on the outside. He was third after qualifying for Sven Seliger, the number one car there on the inside. He lies third in the championship. Row two though for Artis Baumanis, the orange and black Twingo. He must make a good start to try and get in front of Igor Sanin before the end. Sanin leads, Seliger second, Viverka in third place. Watch the Twingo on the inside trying to bump his way through. Little slide there from Mandy August in the Skoda Fabia. The driver loses a couple of places. So it's Sanin, Seliger, Viverka and Baumanis. With Sanin leading, Baumanis in fourth place. Needs to be canny with when he takes the joker lap. Igor Sanin pulling away. Seliger under pressure from Viverka for second place. And that may be slowing him down a little. The Russian has been very strong. Three consecutive victories in the last three rounds. This is a real championship charge for him. When will he take the joker lap? When will Artis Balmanis? It's tactical now. Balmanis, a long way behind, needs to do something special. Sven Zeliger battling to hold on to second place. Egor Sanin making the Clio fly here in the hot, dry, dusty conditions in Austria. Behind him, Seliger has shaken off his rival Viverka now. Down to fourth, up to third, Artis Balmanis. Becker looks as though he's had a bit of a lunge. Balmanis with a little bit of damage. Oh, and Viverka again, very wide, gets it all wrong. Wipers on, not needed here. Must be all arms and elbows in the cockpit. Nigo Sanin pulling away from Sven Seliger. Artis Balmanis in third position. Not what he needs for the championship, though. At the moment, the Russian leading will score maximum points, but. With second spot, Sven Seliger will overhaul Artis Barmanis in the championship if nothing changes. Sanin leads from Seliger. There's Barmanis through the joker lap, comes up behind Thies Hesen. Now he needs to try and find a way by. Doesn't want to get bottled behind. It's difficult when you're in the dust. Hesen in that number two Fiesta, yet to take his joker lap. This is slowing down Balmanis. Can't afford to stay behind. Oh, contact with one of the big straw corner markers. That's pretty resilient. Egor Sanin onto the joker lap. The last lap for him. And he's built up a big advantage. Sven Seliger follows him through. Where is Balmanis? Not in between them, not in front. 
Zeliger will be second. Balmanis in trouble. And Igor Sanin making this look very straightforward. He's going to cruise to victory here in Austria. A really well judged race. Great pace from the Russian in the Clio. Sven Zeliger in second. Artis Balmanis finishing in third place ahead of Vaslav Beverka. Let's now hear from the Latvian. The final was very interesting. Had a quite okay start. Had a big uh, fight with Navitskas, I won it, then I was fourth, I, I want to win every race, I was fighting for more, 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 catch at Beverka, overtake nicely Beverka, and then managed to get, get third. Wanted to get second, but it was there already, were too far away, but uh, anyway, I'm happy with that and good result after such a big, big mistake. The young Latvian on the podium with Sven Seliger in second. And Igor Sanin getting the champagne treatment, victorious again here in Austria. Temperatures over 30 degrees, cool enough for the fans, but it's important to keep the dust down. Temperatures in the cars up to 80 degrees. Super Touring Cars Minus, the battle for the championship between the man in front of you, Josh Sterkens, and Roman Castorell. Points leader by just three points in his Opel Astra. In the second semi final, Sterkens in the Volvo C30 taking the early lead. The championship is fast boiling down to the Czech and the Belgian. Castorel puts in a good move here, gets drive off the corner, side by side across the line. It's very fast, very furious, and very close. Sterkens, the veteran, number one, the reigning champion. It's Roman Castorell of the Czech Republic, who has been the man to beat this season. Castorell and Sterkens take the joker lap at the same time. And as a result, it's Roman Castorell who continues to build his advantage towards the checkered flag. The old Strax in the Mitsubishi Colts in third place as they get to the flag. Fast and furious action. Roman Castorell just coming out on top in qualifying from Josh Sterkens. Joel Strax, the man who will be with them on the front row for the final. Josh Sterkens on the left of the picture. In the center is Roman Castorell. On the right is Joel Strax. And away they go. Roman Castorell needed a good start, but Josh Sterkens gets his nose in front into the first turn. Now, can he hold off the flying Opel Astra? Trouble behind. Everybody makes it through safely, though. Hard to see when you're in the pack, but Josh Sterkens with the perfect view. Now, what can Castorell do? In this situation, he must pile on the pressure, try and force a mistake from the Belgian. Or will he take his joker lap early and come out on a clear track and then use his speed? Whatever, if he allows Sterkens to dictate the terms, then victory is likely to go to the Volvo driver. Sterkens holds him across the line, but very defensive here. Castorell all over the back of him. It's all about traction in these two-wheel drive cars. And Sterkens slides out wide, gives it away. Through goes the Astra. Volvo driver just could not hold that slide long enough. And now he's in front. The speed of the Astra must pay for Roman Castorell. Trying to build his advantage now, so there's room to do the joker lap before your Sterkens gets to him. Ivo van den Brandt, third in the Mitsubishi. In fifth place, the white Peugeot. That's Jakob Bittmann of the Czech Republic. He's 206, looking quick here as well. Castorell has built a decent advantage. Chocolat might work for him now. Through he goes. Now will Josh Sterkens stay out? He really has to if he follows. He's not going to gain anything from it. Yes, there he is, but he didn't get back in front of Castorell and he still has to take his joker lap. And in third place is the Czech in the Persia who has taken his joker lap. Sterkens could be in real trouble here. He might well lose second spot. Well, the good news, if there is any, is that Jakob Bittman in that Peugeot is not registered for Rallycross Challenge Europe points. So Sterkens, as the Peugeot driver closes in behind, yet to do his joker lap. The 
looks certain that he will lose that second place, but not as far as points are concerned. However, he's definitely not going to catch the form man of this season. Castoral leads the Peugeot, is in second. Sterkens comes through, loses another spot on the road, but that Astra is not registered for the Rallycross Challenge Europe either. So as far as points are concerned, maximum for Roman Castoral. Ross Sterkens will take points for second place. And Joel Strax in the Honda Civic will take points for third. Roman Castoral once more celebrates victory. Maximum points for him. Josh Sterken second. Podium completed by Joel Strax of Belgium. Well, let's hear now from our happy winner, Roman Castoral. There's quite a few things that you expect when you're in one of these finals. We expected Jos to be fast away. He's always a good starter. Didn't know how it was going to go after that. I uh, always hope that we'll be quick as well, so we can uh, battle with him. Uh, he's always very good, very fast driver. And of course, the thing here is he had other rivals as well, but he had good pace. We had a good pace too, and it was uh, really good to, to get on the podium and to finish on the top. I'm sure the champagne shower didn't go down too badly in the 35 degree temperatures. He outscores Jos Sterkens by another two points, adding to his championship advantage. And there's much more action to come after this. Welcome back to Austria, round five of the Rallycross Challenge Europe. Into the first of the semi-finals in the Super Touring Cars Plus category, where the championship has been dominated since the start by the Mark 1 Ford Escort of Steve Folders. Making a great start off the grid here in the black Volvo S30 is Philip van der Heyden. The Belgian in the mean black machine, taking a good early lead. Big fields in Super Touring Car Plus here. It's also a round of the Austrian Rallycross Championship. With Philip van der Heyden registered for Rallycross Challenge Europe points and staying well ahead of his rivals, putting on a superb demonstration. In the black, red and gold of Belgium is Davy Layson in his BMW M3 giving chase. Van der Heyden doing a great job. BMW driver takes his joker lap. Throwing the car around with great aplomb, but it's all to no avail. He remains in second place. Philip van der Heiden in the Volvo. When he takes the Joker lap, he will have a handy advantage. Building with every lap. It looks as though he will remain in front with no dramas. Here we go then, unless he makes a mistake here, this is his to take. Comes out clean. Avoids the tyre bales, yes he does. Gets the power down nicely. Racing towards the chequered flag and victory. So after the heat, Steve Folders with maximum points. Philip van der Heiden second. Umbrellas are up, but don't worry, it's not raining. That's shelter from the intense heat of the sun. Into the final, Steve Folders on the front row of the grid. Philip van der Heiden closest to us now and in the middle Davy Lason great start from the Volvo driver the Ford Escort has to tuck in to try and get in front here is another of our Czech drivers Karol Vaslavic Volkswagen Golf Evan van Thielen makes a mistake clatters the barriers in the Volvo restarting Volvo is there and ready to go so too on the front row once more, Philip van der Heiden. Can he repeat the fast start? Closest to us, the black Volvo. Another great launch from him. The Escort struggling a little to try and match that pace. But Folders with the outside line. Can he get in front? He does as they get onto the loose. He has the lead now. It's pretty slick. It's just been watered over the dust and that'll make it very slippery indeed. And of course, that dirt will stick to the tyres as they get onto the hot tarmac. Volders and van der Heiden racing away already. Davy Layson in third place in the BMW, but look at this. Suddenly van der Heiden very slow, and look at the windscreen on the Volvo. He's got the wipers on now, but it doesn't look like his windscreen washers are working. All it's doing is smearing mud everywhere. Davy Layson can see a little better, because he wasn't right up behind anybody on that very wet bit of loose. 
Well, when it's raining and muddy, you expect to have to use the wipers. When it was dry and dusty, maybe Philip van der Heiden's crew hadn't filled up the washer bottles, but you can see how slick it is where the track's been watered. That's given Steve Folders the most enormous advantage. And Davy Layson up into second place. It does look as though van der Heiden's got some visibility now. There's Van Thielen. He's got the check in the golf all over the back of him. This newly slick surface looks like the rear wheel drive cars are struggling a lot. The front drive golf is making a better fist of it. Davy Layson in second place in the background. You can see that van der Heiden loses third to the golf drivers. He takes the joker lap. Van Thielen takes his joker lap behind. He drops to fifth. But the guys in second and third still to take their joker lap. So too has Steve Folders. He's going to build an enormous advantage. David Layson might need to get some wipers working on that car soon as well. He'll be struggling for visibility. Yet to take his joker lap. Into the joker lap goes Steve Folders. Nice work. Smooth drifting from the escort. He's really been all on top of this car the whole season and dominating the field. And there, van der Heiden back in front of Laysons after they have both taken their joke. Collapse and Van Thielen gets it all wrong, stacks it into the tyre barriers. That's not going to affect the leaders. Steve Holders with a big advantage. The Golf currently second. And then van der Heiden in third place, but the Golf driver not there for points. So at the checker, Steve Folders from Philip van der Heiden and Davy Layson. That's how the points are awarded. That was better than Bewoga and Bewoga. One eventful final uh, said uh, Philip van der Heiden. That one, I was struggling for rhythm. I don't think the tyres were up to temperature properly. And then from lap two, it went better. And then lap four, I was thinking about taking the joker lap. And then the red flag came out. And so we all went back to the grid, back to square one. Definitely had a better feeling with the car in the first start than in the second one. It was a bit chaotic though, the second start. We didn't know that they had watered the track. And then, uh, unfortunately, I got my windshield covered in dirt and uh, immediately put the wipers on. They didn't work properly to start with. I had to slow right down, couldn't see anything. But, uh, after that, managed to get the screen clear and in the end, it went okay. Runner-up spot for Van der Heiden, but maximum points once more for Steve Folders in Super Touring Cars Plus. Stunning location, stunning weather for round five of the Rallycross Challenge Europe here in Austria. And time now to look at the supercars. Roman Stepanenko there in the Citroen C4. Fastest in heat one, Max Puka in heat two. Christian Giorolo of Italy fastest in heat three. Roman Stepanenko battling for the lead against the Skoda into the first turn of this semi-final. Stepanenko has been the dominant force in supercars for the last couple of rounds. The Russian shows no signs of loosening his grip. Jos Janssen in second place. Janssen giving chase in the Ford Focus. Stepanenko keeping his nose out front. Again, wipers required on the newly watered surface. Stepanenko charging to victory is not news this season. The big news in the first semi final is Jos Janssen crashes out when he loses a wheel. He will not make the final. Second semi then, and here is the hometown hero, Max Puka, combining Rallycross Challenge Europe with World Rallycross. Plenty of experience and speed for the Austrian in the Ford and he makes a great start to his semi-final. Could really do with winning this one for the confidence and for the grid position. Takes the lead into the first corner in the Fiesta. He avoided that big tyre stack or hay bale. And everybody managed to do so though. It's going to do a lot of damage to the car if you hit one. So Puka now feeling the pressure from behind. He's got to keep pushing on. It's his only chance now to try and take victory away from Roman Stepanenko on his home track. Lots of Austrian competitors also battling for home glory. 
as far as Rallycross Challenge Europe is concerned, Max Puka only has eyes for one man, and that is Roman Stepanenko, the points leader. Stepanenko on top after the qualifying heats. Christian Giorgio second in the Ford Focus. Max Puka points for fourth into the final the big grudge match then will be max puka versus roman stepanenko stepanenko the center jos jansen not here to score points and that's going to have a big effect on the championship can puka take a home victory he'll take that if he can get it and an electrifying start from the austrian but as he breaks early around the outside goes the russian stepanenko on the loose a little bit more grip perhaps for Max Puka. They're still almost wheel to wheel. Stepanenko again trying to look around the outside. More tussles behind, but the crowd surely have eyes really only for one man. Max Puka into the chicane first time round. Stepanenko pushing him from behind. Now it could come down to pressure from Stepanenko. And if Max Puka can hold the lead, and if he can, then it will be decided by who takes their joker lap when Stepanenko again pushing the Austrian out of the corner. But the Russian is bottled up behind and he's not going to win by following Puka. He's going to have to do something different, either force the error quickly or maybe take his joker lap fast. Somebody in trouble behind. That's Alois Holler in his Ford. End of the event for him. So who's going to take the joker lap? And when will the first of the leaders go through? Max Puka now starting to build a little advantage over Stepanenko. And that could be decisive. C4 has rarely followed for even a metre in the finals up until this point of the season. The dust clouds billowing as drivers go wider and wider on the loose. Stepanenko with the first joker lap among the front runners. This could be crucial. Oh, can he take advantage? A big mistake there, hits the tyre barriers. Alois Holler is out. Battles behind. Jürgen Weiss in the number 46 Ford Focus. Stepanenko has taken his joker lap. Max Puka will have to push on hard to try and make enough advantage, but then he's got to be clean coming off it to stay in front of Stepanenko. Well, Max Puka on the joker lap. Stepanenko not held up by the Fiesta because he took his joker lap early. Will he be in front? He will not. And can Stepanenko keep it under control? Yes, big hay bale in the middle of the road, but he avoids it. He's still in the lead. So Roman Stepanenko, his decision to go early for the Joker lap was the right decision. He just didn't seem to have the speed he needed. And this will be a really big moment for Max Puka. A win in Rallycross Challenge Europe at home in Austria. Black flag is out for Austrian competitor Gerald Ada. But Roman Stepanenko still chasing Max Puka, piling on the pressure. This is the longest five laps of the season so far for Max Puka and probably for Roman Stepanenko. Stepanenko trying everything he knows, but Puka seems to have it covered. Checkered flag can't come soon enough for Max Puka, and he claims victory at home in Austria. What a win for Max Puka, soaking up all that pressure. Next Austrian, Jürgen Weiss, was in fifth. The finals was great. I had drive from uh, eighth place to the fourth place. Then I had a little spin with contact with Gerald Eder. But it was only one place I was left. But uh, it was okay. It was a nice race. I'm really proud of this uh, fifth place. And as we head to Italy, let's take a look at the standings. Seven points separate Ego Sanin and Artis Balmanis in Super 1600. Roman Castrol five ahead of your stack in Super Touring Minus. Steve Folders is looking comfortable in Super Touring Cars Plus. And Stepanenko has the lead over Josh Stekens as we head to Italy next time out.